ESA's Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer, or JUICE mission, will arrive at Jupiter in July of 2031, where it will study both Jupiter and its icy moons, Ganymede, Callisto, and Europa. The ultimate goal of the mission is to study the system as a model for gas giant planets everywhere, and its suite of 10 instruments will characterize Jupiter and three of its moons in great detail, with a focus on the potential for huge bodies of liquid water below the icy surfaces of the moons that could potentially support extraterrestrial life. The mission launched in April of 2023 on its eight-year journey, so why are we talking about it now? Well, JUICE just successfully completed a flyby of Venus. Why in the world is this spacecraft zipping around Venus in the inner solar system when it's supposed to be headed in the opposite direction to Jupiter? JUICE is getting a gravity assist from Venus in order to reach Jupiter while burning the least amount of fuel possible. JUICE already grabbed some energy from the Moon and Earth back in 2024 when it performed flybys and was able to test all of its instruments. For the Venus flyby, the instruments were shut down to protect them from the harsh environment, so sadly we don't have any pictures. But JUICE will now head back towards Earth for two more gravity assists in 2026 and 2029 before finally heading out to its destination. You can see the trajectory on screen with the yellow dot of the Sun in the center. Venus is the yellow circle, Earth is blue, and Jupiter green. How does a gravity assist work? The spacecraft is using its gravitational interaction with the planet to change its direction. With respect to the planet, that doesn't seem to achieve much, looking much like a zero-sum game as the spacecraft approaches and then leaves the planet's influence. However, when we look at the interaction with respect to the Sun, the spacecraft will pick up a significant increase in velocity along the direction of travel of the planet. There are ways to tailor this interaction with the planet to significantly increase, or if needed, decrease the velocity of the spacecraft. This is a change in velocity that doesn't cost any precious fuel, and by carefully setting up a series of gravity assists with different celestial bodies, the spacecraft can reach its final destination. That's a super quick and dirty sketch of what's happening. If you want more details, there's a ton of great resources on the web. JUICE gave its operators a bit of a scare back in mid-July when they lost communication with the spacecraft from the deep space network stations on Earth. Engineers ended up blindly sending commands up to the spacecraft 200 million kilometers away, hoping they'd be received by one of the array of antennas since they suspected the main communication subsystem wasn't functioning correctly. Fortunately, after about 20 hours of trying, the spacecraft responded and it was back on track before its flyby of Venus. The issue was traced to a subtle bug in the software that the team are now deciding how to remedy. We do now have a bit of a wait until JUICE reaches Jupiter, but once it does, the results should be spectacular. That's today's video. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. I will catch you in the next one.